so we studied rule of three for uh, selecting or defining the fragments so these fragments can actually bind at your uh, uh, protein active site so how you select best fragment for your uh, further optimization so there is uh, uh, this concept of ligand efficiency uh, which is uh, based upon the calculation of binding free energies of this uh, fragments with respect to the protein so what is ligand efficiency it is uh, the binding free uh, energy uh, divided by the number of heavy atoms of the uh, fragments right so this is the relationship uh, this relationship can also be uh, defined in terms of uh, kd which is your uh, dissociation constant and ic50 values activity values of the ligand so a fragment with a high ligand efficiency is always preferred uh, there are various uh, techniques to identify uh, the fragments uh, we have uh, direct binding assays or functional assays then you have nmr mass spectrometry and crystallography based approaches so in uh, direct or uh, functional assays you have hts or high throughput uh, assay systems right so there are some uh, a slight difference here because hts they use low micromolar concentrations so these low micromolar concentrations are not suitable for identifying small fragments so the solution to this problem is screening these fragments at higher concentrations so this type of approach was uh, applied by Elman group for identifying uh, kinase SRC inhibitors right? next approach is uh, NMR based screening so in this case you have a radio labeled uh, nitrogen that is N15 uh, radio labeled biological target or protein right? so once uh, the small fragment they bind with the radio labeled biological target you observed amide chemical shift in uh, in nmr spectra which can be measured and this data actually can be compared or combined with the structural information uh, that is the structure of your protein and uh, you can identify where exactly the the fragments are binding onto the protein so further these uh, fragments binding at different subsites of the protein active site can be joined or linked together to form a lead compound uh, which can be tested for inhibition uh, by the functional assays mass spectrometry uh, methods can also be used uh, for identifying uh, the fragments so you have this type of uh, setup in uh, uh, electrospray ionization mass spectrometry where your sample is injected where uh, first electron beam is used to ionize the sample and this sample is uh, accelerated through this uh, magnetic field and this uh, sample is further uh, divided into particles and uh, these particles can be uh, identified in terms of mass to charge ratio and the final results can be detected over here so uh, it is possible to identify covalently bound fragments uh, for example uh, proteins like uh, cysteine proteases and some other non covalently bound fragments it is possible to identify through this mass spectrometry methods so crystallographic uh, methods can also be used for identifying fragments so your uh, uh, molecules they are first turned into uh, crystals so here uh, you use x-ray which are passed through this uh, crystals uh, of your samples and then these rays are diffracted and you will obtain this type of diffraction pattern so this diffraction pattern can be converted into electron density map with the help of powerful computers right and this electron density map can further convert it into protein ligand uh, models uh, which can be studied by visualizer softwares 
this is a comparison of uh, the techniques for finding fragments so each uh, of the method they have their strengths and weaknesses um, so if you look at the total amount of protein required for uh, these methods uh, it is very low in case of a functional screening whereas uh, a little higher amounts of the proteins are needed for NMR uh, mass spectrometry and crystallographic methods if you look uh, for overall cost on the instrumentations uh, so there are no special instruments required for functional screening whereas for others you need high-end instrumentation facility to study the fragments and uh, further you have uh, several other parameters which can be uh, checked for uh, various uh, techniques here right if you see rate of false positives it is high in case of functional screens uh, but you have very good uh, prediction with other methods so further these uh, fragments they need to be converted into hits or uh, lead molecules in order to get potential clinical candidates so there are different methods like uh, fragment optimization fragment merging or linking and you have a uh, in situ fragment assembly right? so fragment optimization there can be substitutions and expansions uh, which can be carried out for your uh, fragments uh, in order to increase the affinity of your uh, fragments with respect to your protein right? so if you see this example here <coughs> so you have two step uh, modification to this initial fragment or you can say scaffold uh, you see this uh, particular ring is being replaced by this type of uh, uh, fragment here uh, first and secondly uh, to this uh, molecule uh, there is another addition at this particular point here so you have first and second modification and it is important to check what are the differences in the biological activities of these optimizations so you can compare the activities for example it is a very potent compound the final compound is very potent one if you compare uh, the activity value that is 0 0.062 micromolar compared to 25 and 45 micromolar for the other molecules so next is fragment merging or linking so a uh, Two fragments can be combined together in order to form a hybrid molecules and uh, these hybrid molecules uh, should have improved uh, potency as well as desired physiochemical or uh, drug like properties so you can see in case of fragment merging you'll have this type of uh, reaction here where uh, two fragments can be merged together and some portion can be removed in order to form a whole molecule right so here is the example if you see these two fragments here so this portion of the first fragment and this portion of the second fragment has been replaced and other two uh, fragments are merged together in order to obtain this final molecule so if you see uh, the ic50 values or activity values we have a more potent uh, molecule which has a activity value of 10 micromolar when compared to the 75 and 150 micromolar uh, to the parent fragments in fragment linking you have uh, different uh, fragments here uh, you need linkers in order to link these fragments together so here is one uh, simple example where you start with uh, one fragment here and there are three different uh, other fragments so this fragment can be linked to uh, these three fragments individually and you see the differences in the activity values ultimately so you have more potent series of molecules when compared to the parent molecules or parent fragments in situ fragment assembly 
some proteins have flexible binding surfaces so it is uh, hard to select combination of fragments uh, with the techniques such as NMR and X-ray crystallography in this uh, uh, proteins so uh, what we use is in situ uh, techniques where you can actually use the active side of the protein to grow the fragments according to the binding side pocket of your protein so this slide uh, presents the overview of a fragment based drug discovery so first you apply the rule of three for uh, identifying uh, fragments and after selection of these fragments so you have fragment optimization right so there are various fragment optimization methods so optimized fragments via linking merging or combining uh, we uh, we subject the lead molecules or hit molecules obtained by fragment optimization into functional assays so after functional assays we obtain potential lead molecules which represent our potential clinical candidates so that's all for fragment based drug discovery